Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I would like to analyze the 1.5 billion Bybit hack in relation to a Ledger wallet. As you may know, Ben Zhao was using a Ledger device, and that was what he used to sign the transaction, which approved the malicious contract, which made the hack of their cold wallet possible. So a lot of people are blaming the Ledger device. Well, blaming the Ledger device for this breach is like blaming the keys of your car when your brakes fail. The car keys didn't cause the accident, the bad brakes did. So I want to go through exactly what happened and explain to you uh, what went wrong. I'm going to talk about the ways that this could have been avoided and some of the tools that Ledger has available for avoiding this kind of thing. So let's jump in. So the first thing I'll do is go through exactly what Ben Zhao said happened. We'll hear it straight from him and I'll kind of explain uh, what he's talking about as we go through this. Basically the team at Bybit was implementing what's called a multi-sig strategy, which means that in order to access the wallet, more than one person has to actually sign the transaction. I believe they were implementing a three out of five solution, which means there were five authorized key holders and every transaction has to be signed by at least three people. In so doing this, they were using a third party software called Safe Wallet, which allows them to implement this multi-sig strategy. So that's what he's referring to when he talks about the UI. Um, Bybit uses uh, SAFE um, for our Ethereum-related uh, uh, code wallet uh, as multisig, uh, which means we use the, the SAFE product for the it's a smart contract level uh, code wallet uh, uh, multisig. Basically, what they were doing was moving some Ethereum from a cold wallet which is an offline wallet, which was protected by this multi-sig strategy. And in his case, he used a ledger to secure his key. Uh, when this transaction came, it was a normal URL. I, I double checked. It was the safe URL uh, from the official safe website. So the URL of the safe wallet was correct, or at least looked correct. One of the theories is that the UI was hacked. In fact, he mentions that uh, later on. He talks about the UI being muxed. So they were fooled into thinking this was their regular UI and they were most likely being directed to a malicious site that was pretending to be the safe site or had cloned the safe site interface and looked very similar. I checked on that. I clicked on the link and checked. And then I checked on the UI the, um, the destination address uh, to make sure that it is our uh, warm wallet. And we have a procedure to make sure that it is uh, what we saw. So all of that checked out. And, and he verified the address, but he was verifying it in the UI on his computer screen, not on his ledger device. The initial transfer that we made uh, was uh, around, I believe, 30,000 uh, ETH. Uh, uh, it was not a full amount. He's talking about 30,000 Ethereum that they were planning on transferring, but the cold wallet itself held over 400,000 ETH total. That's what he's referring to when he says it wasn't the full amount of the wallet. And, and I also checked the, the ledger screen. Uh, one of the issues with... Uh, uh, at least from my experience with uh, uh, the Ethereum related code wallet transfer is, is that it doesn't exactly shows the destination. It shows a, a lot of code. Okay. So what he's talking about is using an Ethereum D app site, in this case, the safe wallet. When he goes to sign the transaction, he's not able to use, uh, he has to use blind signing. And when you use the blind signing option, you don't see a clear representation of what you're sending to the destination wallet on the ledger screen. 
Now, Ledger Clear Signing uh, solves this issue, but this particular interface that they were using, this safe wallet interface, did not support clear signing. Um, I'm not sure if they're planning on implementing clear signing, but a lot of third-party wallets are, as you'll see in a bit. I checked the code, but I didn't uh, check fully. Uh, if normally also the address, the destination address, is not inside of that uh, multi-sig signing, so I signed. Okay, so he's telling us that the destination address does not show up in the code that he saw on his ledger screen. So it's quite obvious that he was using blind signing. And uh, that's what it is. You know, I, the, it ends with, uh, I was, so I signed, right? And once he signed, uh, he, he was authorizing a malicious smart contract, which uh, altered the logic code of their cold wallet and allowed the hacker to access the wallet entirely uh, without using multi-sig uh, and being able to make that outgoing transaction uh, simply uh, by authorizing using you know one key so uh, that's basically what happened so i have a whole bunch of links that i'll share with you the first one is a thread from charles guillaume uh, explaining exactly what happened and how using uh, the ledger clear signing technology uh, could have avoided this situation. So I'm not trying to bag on Bybit and their security protocols. They were doing the right thing. They had the right philosophy. Uh, they were implementing multi-sig, which is uh, a good practice. Uh, but un unfortunately, they were implementing multi-sig using a, a Ethereum-based smart contract dApp. Uh, or an on-chain solution. Ledger has an enterprise solution that can implement multi-sig uh, at a company, company level so that no one person has full access to a crypto wallet. And their solution involves clear signing and it involves an off-chain solution for multi-sig. And this has been around since 2018. So if Bybit had been implementing the Ledger Enterprise for implementing their multi-sig, they would have had much more information using clear signing and would have been alerted to this and not signed the transaction ultimately. So I'll leave links to uh, Charles uh, Charles's thread here where he talks about uh, because they were using uh, safe-based wallets to implement their multi-sig, that uh, that was uh, an attack surface. No one is quite sure how the UI was hacked at Bybit. Only they would know for sure. But it is quite obvious that uh, something happened to the UI and uh, to all three of the signers in this case, right? Because all three of the signers that were required sign this transaction. So it looks like the UI was hacked in some way or form, maybe through phishing emails or social engineering. Uh, the hacker was able to gain access to these computers and alter the UI. Uh, but we uh, definitely know that um, Ben Zhao used blind signing when he signed the transaction. And uh, at that level, uh, you would definitely want to uh, find a way to implement clear signing rather than relying on an Ethereum-based UI dApp and blind signing. Um, I'll also let you know that uh, MetaMask is uh, implementing clear signing. They've joined the clear signing initiative. Uh, so look forward to more enhanced functionality from MetaMask speaking from experience when you're doing swaps and trades uh, using MetaMask in conjunction with your ledger. In the past, you've had to enable blind signing to do those smart contracts. So it's a breath of fresh air that MetaMask is finally on board the clear signing initiative. Uh, I'll give you a link here to uh, Pascal, who is the CEO of Ledger, talking about their uh, enterprise solutions that implement clear signing and multi-sig at an enterprise company level. So you, you should check out this thread as well.
Charles also posted that they're upping the ante here a little bit uh, with a transaction check, which is an upgrade from what you were seeing on your screen before. So there's a lot of improvements coming down the pike on top of what they already have. I also wanted to quickly share this article with you uh, that was shared with me by Ledger uh, talking about blind signing. Using blind signing with a ledger is like basically using a, a blank check, right? Because you can't see uh, what you can't really see what you're signing. And then they have some uh, pictures down here of the ledger stacks interface. Ledger flex is almost identical, a slightly smaller screen. This is ideal uh, when you're implementing uh, clear signing so that you can clearly see exactly what you're doing. Now you will be able to use your Ledger Nano X and your Ledger Nano S Plus with clear signing. Unfortunately, the older Ledger Nano S does not support clear signing. And I would highly recommend if you're still using a Ledger Nano S that you upgrade uh, from that to at least a Ledger Nano S Plus. Uh, another way to mitigate the risk if you're still using blind signing is to use a secondary ledger device for your dApp swaps and trades. And also there are a lot of uh, staking protocols that still require blind signing. And use your go-to ledger for your long-term storage, um, either within Ledger Live or if you want to use a third-party wallet. Uh, use a third-party wallet that does not require blind signing. You can use MetaMask uh, to manage your crypto uh, without having to enable blind signing. You can use your go-to ledger device with third-party wallets as long as you're not implementing blind signing. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, it's good to have as much knowledge as possible and know exactly what happened rather than uh, jumping to quick conclusions. If you have any questions about anything I covered, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.